Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are once again building something from the Fallout world because it is one of my favorite games of all times and I continue to get suggestions from that particular game and I really enjoy making things from the Fallout world and I wanted to use some more of my WTF that I got from Cosplay Apprentice to try and make another weapon and one of them stuck out to me, a melee weapon that I think is super cool. It came in, I believe, the Nuka World add-on and it's something that you can actually buy from the main shop there in Nuka World and it is the Throat Slicer. Now I'm going to attempt to make the upgraded version of it, but I think it'll look pretty cool yeah today we are going to attempt to make the throat slicer from Fallout 4 let's template it out for you let's get to building I freehanded this template based off of that one picture I just showed. Probably should have taken a screenshot and printed it out to actual size or at least looked at a 3D model in game. It is a little bit off in spots and inaccurate on one side. I'm using some more WTF from Cosplay Apprentice, not a sponsor, just trying it out a little more. Click my affiliates link to buy some and test it out for yourself. The foam is color coded, the gray foam is 6mm, the black is 4mm, and the red is 2mm. He also sent me a roll of each, so that's why you see a long strip here. It is some dense stuff. Though it is probably overkill, I decided to add some support wires inside. The blade is over 20 inches and wobbles just a little bit, so I added some fencing wire on the inside, marked it on the foam, and then burn in a channel for it to sit in. Glue in the fencing wire into the channel, then to mark the other side, I added a little paint pen to the top of the metal and push the other half on top. Fill in any gaps while the impression is still in the foam and burn the other half. Add contact cement to both halves and then sandwich it together permanently. The way I made my throat slice is not accurate to the game. The handle is one piece and bolts to the blade in the actual game. The handle bracket also only attaches to one side. You could easily modify the template that I give you to be more accurate. Don't know how sturdy the build would be that way. The way I modified mine, it makes it a very solid blade.
I cut the blade bevel in when I cut out the parts, but the edges needed a bit of smoothing and evening out. So I make my final passes using a stone bit on my rotary tool to give everything that final look. To add the little details, I just glue them on with some super glue. It's quicker and less messy to clean up later. If you don't have a wood burner, you could easily just carve this out with your rotary tool. Either way, make sure to wear a respirator. You don't want the dust in your lungs while sanding or to breathe in the fumes while melting it. I also have a window right next to me with a vent fan keeping the room relatively clear. Two coats of Plasti Dip. Did a light misting of silver brown and black to give it an aged metal look for a base coat. Alright, now my fun part, the weathering and aging. First I did some washes using light watered down apple barrel acrylic paints. This paint gets pushed in all the cracks and edges to bring out the details. Then most of it gets wiped off with a paper towel.
To add my rust effect, I am using a ship brush and some folk art painted finishes. There is a dark and a light rust color. It has a grit texture mixed into the paint to add an extra effect to it. To kick it up a notch, I sprinkled some yellow and red spices from the spice rack. It just adds to the layers. Then the last step is to pull out a little more detail by hitting some high points with a little folk art brushed metal. This is the pale silver I'm using with a dry brush technique. I like using an old chip brush for this to get an uneven pull across the material. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, not too bad. This is definitely a, a fairly simple build, something you can knock out in a couple of hours. I built this while waiting on paint to dry on my chain sword from Warhammer that I built last week. Uh, so definitely something you could easily knock out in a few hours and not have a lot of skills in order to build. Um, the foam itself is extremely rigid. Definitely test it out if you haven't already. Uh, WTF foam. It is sold by Skylar Osler, aka Cosplay Apprentice. This is not a paid for advertisement. This is simply my testing of the product and it is extremely durable. Those of you trying to build things that are a little bit skinnier but still having that durability of the thicker foam you should definitely try this stuff out. I also only painted this using plaid paints. Um, I'll list the, the ones that I use down in the description below like always. And yeah, if you need to add a little bit of grit to your rust effects, I've kind of found that using spices kind of actually help you to achieve a more realistic look. Turmeric, cinnamon, chili powder, cayenne pepper, anything that's basically a yellow or orange or reddish color can give you those same effects of rust if you use them properly and keep in mind that getting them on your hands may stain your hands. Uh, so <laughs> try it out. Tell me what you think about it and yeah. Maybe you'll try and make one of these weapons yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to make Fallout weapons so smoothly that they constantly want one for Christmas or birthday or whenever. Yeah, they probably got a couple. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Let's test out the durability here. One, two, ha! sneak attack.